welcome back to our hotel room. This is day three that we've been in the hotel. We have not eaten a home cooked meal in about three days. We've gone out to lots of restaurants. Awesome, thank you. Kind of sucks, but we're supposed to be moving into our place later today. We are going to be practicing in the morning, running drills, and later in the afternoon, we're going to be having a scrimmage. 35, kind of down to 25 on Sunday. Today's Thursday, so we got five days to do so. We got to go get some gas because I'm almost out of gas. We got to get some food because we got to get some food. We're eating a Golden Corral later tonight for Team Buffet Pro Hockey Life episode two today. Somebody was in Vegas last week and made some uh, poor decisions. Yep, but what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. By the way, day three, shitter has not been fixed. When do you think they're gonna fix the shitter? I don't know why they didn't fix it yesterday. We asked. Them. What kind of nutrition you got in there? Is there any protein in there? Probably not. <laughs> might maybe be in some fiber, maybe. Hopefully, might, might be in there somewhere. Hey, we're going to Rock and Ronnie's though. All right. Upper Decker. Let's go. We got gas, and we're on our way to get some breakfast. Off to the rink. Beautiful day in Georgia too, by the way. Zero humidity today. Love it. Here we go, GoPro. Let's take a here picture. We, here we go, GoPro. Let's take a picture. Can we do that? Well, At Yon Sauce, follow the Insta. Yeah. Today's video Q&A is going to be hockey advice, just general hockey related theme questions, kind of fits in line with the video for today. Today's Q&A and tomorrow's will both be of this theme, so if your question wasn't answered today, it might be in it tomorrow. First question comes from Joseph underscore Wonderland underscore. What do you do to stay focused when you let in two or three goals? Gotta reset, gotta relax. I find when the mind is very uneasy and there's a lot going on, a lot of, um, that's when things start to go sour and go south. So we got to calm things down, take a deep breath, talk positively, things are going to be okay. It's our job to stop the puck. We're going to find a way to stop the puck, but everything's going to work itself out. Trust me, 
makes a big difference. Mayor Craig 01, have you ever wanted to play forward or defense, but was still getting dedicated to playing goal? I switched to become a goalie when I was 10, and ever since I've always thought, what if? Like, what could I have done if I was still a forward or a D-man? I like to think at nine years old, I was pretty solid for what I was, uh, but obviously 23 years, 23 years old, going on 24, 13 years since the switch. It's kind of too late to wonder why now, but I do love playing out when I can, it is fun. All right, next question comes from Keegan underscore five, and he asks, what's your favorite KJHL memory? For those who don't know, the KJHL is the junior B league that I played in once upon a time for three years. Getting traded from Lundar after they sat me for three months because I wanted to trade because I didn't want to play for a team that just didn't take anything seriously ever. Putting up a shutout, 40 save goose egg, game three of the playoffs to go up 2-1 in the series. Although we did get gassed the next two games in a row to get eliminated, we still lost though, so it doesn't really matter. That's my favorite memory though. Goose egg, game three, 40 saves, suck at Lundar. I'm just kidding, I actually love Lundar. My dad still lives there. What would you say is the next step for a 20 year old that wants to keep moving up? Any tips on a league? I would say keep training, keep working hard on the gym and then the ice. In the gym, on the ice, sorry. And keep making phone calls, keep reaching out to teams, trying to muster up an opportunity. So all it takes is one, right? All you gotta do is get on base and you're in the game. Not just in hockey or in goaltending, but in life in general and other things as well. You never know what can happen. All it takes is one. One person to believe in you and give you a shot. E. Juansen, good sweet ass. Would you ever consider playing pro in Sweden like the SHL? Absolutely, if there's an opportunity to play somewhere and it's a good shot, I would absolutely entertain that idea. All right, next question comes from Nicholas Cristiano. What's your favorite aspect of goaltending? I love stopping pucks, I love the gear, I like hanging out on a team, just generally speaking. Goaltending is just fun though, like, I think it's very underappreciated. I like stopping pucks, I don't think I need to explain any more than that. Next question comes from uh, Leland G 1 I really like this question. What team did you have the most fun playing on when you played junior? I'm gonna go hands down the Arbor Ice Dogs. I had fun because, long story short, I asked for a trade over the summer. I said, I don't wanna play here if the team is gonna take things seriously, if we're gonna have five guys showing up for practice, eight guys showing up for games. I wanna play college hockey, I wanna keep playing. Like I, I can't have the tools in place to achieve that goal if this is where I'm playing. So long story short, I ended up getting sat for three months till I think middle of November, end of November, getting traded to Arburg, played for Arburg. Every day I was showing up at the rink with a purpose, trying to get better, generally having a good time. And I think that's why I ended up signing to play college hockey at VIU. Granted things didn't work out the way that I wanted them to, but I just generally was having a good time. And I don't think I would have been able to do that if I was still playing in Lundar for those two years, for a third year. Trey Tompkins, what's the uh, favorite place you've ever played hockey in so far? I'm gonna say LA at the uh, Toyota Sports Center. I would have loved to have played at the Staples Center. I, I also played at MTS Center when I was like 12 years old, 10, 11, 12 years old, and that was a blast. I'd love to play there again. I haven't played there, obviously, because Junior and all the places, places that I've played. Don't play at MTS Center, but MTS Center, favorite rink in the world. The one place that I would dream to play a game on. Jacob underscore Donner 10, what type of workouts do you do when you go to the gym? If you watch the videos, you'll see that in almost every video, I try to put a workout component, an on ice component, and some form of like a Q&A or like talking piece to kind of provide information. If you watch the videos, you'll see various exercises that I do in the gym. I don't think I want to do a full dedicated gym video because it's just not that entertaining or interesting for a lot of people. Uh, but if you really care and you want to go back and watch some of the videos, that's what I do. We do a lot of squats, deadlifts, uh, trap jump bars, shoulder press, bench press, a lot of core stuff. Just general stuff to be better at goaltending. All right, next question comes from Gavin D. 2005. Do you think that YouTube has helped your career as goaltending or has it slowed it down? I think it's absolutely helped because I'll tell you right now, I would not be playing the game today if I wasn't making videos because I can't afford to play the game. I can't afford the gear. I can't afford the training. All the stuff that I do, I would never be able to afford if I wasn't making videos. Sometimes it's come across as a bit of a distraction to some coaches and some teams, which is 100% fair. I've tried to accommodate that. Uh, but I would say it 100% has helped more than it has hurt because without it, I wouldn't still be playing. Blake30, Usenik123, what keeps you motivated to keep playing, never quitting, always finding the positives and things? I'm gonna say right now, the biggest change that I made in this off season was changing my mental approach and how I think the game and how I approach the game. And with John Stevenson changing a lot of that and just my perception on things, I'm probably not playing the game right now. If I didn't make the changes that I had with John, um, I probably would have given up. I think getting cut from the Biasons was a big blow especially when I probably would have told you end of August, I would have bet my life that I would have been able to make that team because I was feeling so good about my game. I did everything I possibly could to get the result that I was trying to achieve and I didn't get it. It's hard to find the positives a lot of times. <sighs> a lot of times I don't want to find the positives, but now look at the positives, try to build on it, go from there or just quit. I don't want to quit. Mostly because A, I love this game and B, YouTube's also my primary income. So kind of got to get paid and keep playing the game. Last question of the day comes from Anita Jackoff, and uh, okay, we're gonna conclude the video right there. See you in two days. 
Now, I'll be dead nuts honest with you, the Canadian US dollar right now sucks if you live in Canada. It's not so bad if you live in the States. One place it doesn't suck is sidelineswap.com. Everything is sold in US dollars, so if you're from Canada and you're selling in the US, you're making a lot more scratch, a little more coin. I highly recommend you go and sell all your equipment there. Sideline Swap is the only place that I would trust to sell my equipment or buy from online that is not a retail store. Go to the website. See you next week.